welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions as you can see by the title and again the long absence i have grown very bored of the formatted videos i guess i'm just that type of person that no matter how much it works in terms of format like updating you with wrap-ups i get extremely bored doing the same thing i'm not sure if a lot of people in the booktube community feel that way like being very sick of tbrs and wrap-ups and prediction five star predictions and like 23 books to read in 2023 like it's the same stuff every year granted i don't do any but the wrap-ups but even the wrap-ups <laughs> have started to irritate the crap out of me so i thought i would just like sit down do a casual book chat maybe light a candle and talk about the things that I want to talk about, like I don't want to do a video where it's the worst books of this year, the best books of this year, the most disappointing. Like I don't feel like just categorizing it in that way. I thought I would just sit down. I will like divide this video into chapters so that might kind of help. But I just want to talk about like books I didn't like, books I DNF books I really really loved rereads or not rereads like I don't want to have to do a list and stick to a certain number and then like if I can't find 10 books having to narrow it down to five I just don't like the formatting I am not into it I don't want to do it and I am sorry if people like that kind of video but unpopular opinions galore that is kind of the point of why I wanted to do this kind of space so I'm just gonna take out my tablet just scroll through the year and talk about whatever I feel like talking about and then if you want to jump around I will label the chapters like worst books best books mini wrap-up of November and December because I didn't talk about those books yet so I hope you enjoy is is probably a little bit longer of a video but I prefer that because I don't know these sit down chatty videos are so much more fun to film and watch in my opinion than five different videos that are just so strictly formatted like an award show so if you are someone who agree with, agrees with me enjoy i'm gonna light a candle first there so we can have like a flickery vibe i'm not sure if this bothers you but it's a good source of light so <laughs> i guess let's just roll with it i will start by talking about the things i didn't like because i would like to get that out of the way and then we can do the gush without a doubt i know what i want to talk about first and it is my two dnfs like i I think there were many, probably more DNFs, but these are the two that I know I did this year. And let's just talk about them first. I did do wrap ups for both of them, so I'm not gonna like be on them for too long, but I have to mention them. First up is Bridgerton. Um, <laughs> you saw that definitely in the wrap up, but that I absolutely hated. I think the worst thing about books like that, for me, is that they're not dull. Like, they're not. Just that as a genre is not dull. <laughs> the shenanigans of a certain family, a romance, a standing in society, especially since it's like Regency era or Victorian or whichever era it is. Like, it's old, so there's like social standing and sexism it's never ever boring to read those books and i didn't expect to be bored like i am realistic i don't like to read that genre but i knew i would still be entertained i wrote for episode back in the day i love choices i loved the game love struck it's one of my favorites ever like i love that stuff sometimes so why why the scene like what drove that woman to write it I think it hurts even more that it was a woman because like how is it reclaiming equality and justice to just be as bad 
as your previous oppressor. It's one of those things that's like, they used to slaughter us, so now we get to slaughter them, and it's just a circle, like you've done nothing. This book felt like that. It was like, this is a very sexist time period I want to write in. So instead of doing sexual assault the normal way, I will do it in reverse. And that will somehow be better. And I, I'm not sure why she thought that would be better. Clearly it worked because she has a whole series and an adaptation and everyone's reading her. But it's awful. <laughs> it's awful. Like it's just insulting, I think, to readers everywhere. And I am 100,000% sure that if she did it the normal way, like male to female sexual assault, that it would be not as good, not as well received. Like everyone would be horrified. So I don't love the double standards. I can't believe I have to even say it because I wouldn't have liked to see sexual assault done on women because why would I like to see that? But this was no better. This was no better and I am a little bit annoyed because I was entertained up till then. I could read the other books. <laughs> like I think that kind of incident only happens in the first book. But as I said in my wrap up, I will just repeat it <laughs> while we're still here. If that is the first thing you present to me as like your authorial voice, this is what you want me to listen to hear you say, if that's the first thing, I don't care what you have to say after that. I don't because someone allowed you to publish this and you signed your name on this. So I don't care what else you have to say. <laughs> the second one is a bit more unknown. So I'm not sure how important this will be to anyone watching, but it's this series of graphic novels. I was liking it quite a bit. It wasn't my favorite ever. Like it's, it's not one of those things where I would like start crying immediately if it got bad because I was so invested in it. It's not one of those. But that being said, the two things ironically in this list will be represented. The two things I cannot stand in fiction, like in, in the slightest, like there is no scenario in which you could present this to me and I would think it was fine to read about. That is animal cruelty of any kind and sexual assault rape used as a plot device in general. Those are like the two things. The two things I will never, <laughs> never ever be okay with in a series. This has the one that I haven't talked about yet, animal abuse. It's gory overall, and that's, while not the best, kind of expected because it's a graphic novel. The women are a little overly sexualized. There's gore. What else is new? But this volume that I put up intentionally has just a plot that upset me to my core. Like I was reading it at like two in the morning, hoping to wind down for bed and I just got more and more upset. And then I just started crying at the end. And I was like, this, this is not what I want from this series. Like it wasn't that good. <laughs> I, it, you know, that feeling when you read or watch something and you're like, okay, they're probably not gonna do this, then they do it. But they're surely not gonna do this, and then they do it. It was this volume. It was this volume. Like, I was okay with the misogynistic costumes, with no great female characters even, with because the three mains were very entertaining. But when they did this, <laughs> I will just like put up a spoiler warning on the screen somewhere not that you probably care because I know it's an Italian comic, so probably not a lot of people have read it, but spoiler warning somewhere. This beast that they're hunting did nothing wrong, literally nothing wrong. They were provoked into a rampage by hunters because they wanted to trophy hunt it, which a delight in and of itself. And the whole narrative was written in a way that they had to kill the beast 
but also they travel with the hunters and banter with the hunters and like these are the main characters that i'm supposed to be rooting for are you telling me that they're being nice to trophy hunters that they're just waltzing about with them and it all ends with the beast being killed i think what drove me over the edge was the sympathetic note about the trophy hunters like the whole narrative was written in a way that felt sympathetic to them and i didn't want to read that anymore <laughs> so i just flipped through to the end and that absolutely like shattered all all chances of me ever continuing this series because in the end they kill the beast and our main character because the main huntress is killed and thank the christ for that at least he goes to find her body and then cries for her cries for her the last shot we see of our main character is crying over the trophy hunter not over the beast that was provoked into a rampage that they had to kill and then after that there's a whole short story about that huntress hunting a tiger and it ends with her like decapitating it and holding its head up i'm getting upset just talking about this if you can't notice and i was like i don't want i don't want to read anyone who would spotlight this kind of stuff like i don't want to read someone who would dedicate their hard-earned time and money to drawing a trophy hunter decapitating a tiger and being glorified as the victim in this story like i i was not interested in this so i'm not i was gonna say if you're someone who shares that opinion don't read this i'm just gonna say don't read this because frankly if anyone who doesn't share my opinion about this is watching this video then please never come back here <laughs> please never come back here because not only do i not condone it i condemn it <laughs> so th this was upsetting this was just straight up upsetting and probably the worst dnf of the year because while bridgerton was upsetting at least it didn't violate my respect for this series like i knew what I was going into with Bridgerton this just took me by surprise this was something casual that I read every now and then that I had fun with so I didn't expect to be insulted in this way I think this is going to be the longest rant of the video but that's because I didn't talk about it thus far I didn't want to it was upsetting I would start crying every time I talked about it because anything to do with animals is something very personal to me so I didn't want to talk about it till now I talked about it now and that's probably the last time I will mention it but just a fair warning if anyone's not read up to here or is thinking about reading it I am revoking my recommendation <laughs> the next few are just gonna be not as extreme so I can calm down <laughs> but some other books that I really really didn't like I'm not gonna go on about them Vampire Academy again read this with my friend at the time didn't didn't enjoy the casual girl on girl hate like since we're in Rose's head and she pretty much objectifies every woman she comes across it was a little exhausting like you're gonna some people are gonna be like oh but they're 17 I was 17 granted I was not that type of 17 year old but I was around that type of 17 year old and even this felt extreme so I did not love this. <laughs> then there was Spinning Silver. Naomi and Novik and I had a very short run, it would seem. She was a bit better at this than Uprooted, but not by a lot. Like, if you have three story threads for me to follow and I only enjoy one <laughs> at best, that is not that big of a compliment. It's not even the writing. I think her writing is okay, but which might make some people mad. She reminds me of Gaiman in the way that they have cool ideas. Like, they come to the storyboard with cool ideas. No ideas on how to follow through and how to actually make the idea interesting and have some significant point later on in the story. They just run with the cool idea. So yeah, I'm not that interested in Naomi Novik anymore. And if you see me scrolling, that's because I'm like looking through my books on the tablet this i wouldn't really call the worst read of the year because it wasn't but i'm going to include it because it was very disappointing to me and that's demon slayer or kimetsu no yaiba any way you want to say it 
I'm going to be very transparent. I did not want to watch it at all. I usually watch the show, then read the manga, but I'll get to it. I did not want to watch it. Then I, <laughs> then there was one, one second clip of Doma with my favorite voice actor. So I was immediately like, okay, fine, I'll watch it. I'm very weak that way. If I hear him, I'm just going to watch it. And then I read it because I really like it when manga are finished. That never happens. <laughs> that pretty much never happens. The only manga that are finished are like Demon Slayer and Tokyo Ghoul. So I read it and it was underwhelming. I didn't particularly love the show because I feel like it has very, very unrealistic fights. Like constantly it builds and builds until it's like, we're going past the limit. We're going past the limit. I shouldn't be alive anymore. I shouldn't be alive anymore. And at some point I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't be alive anymore. Can we stop this? Like I can suspend my disbelief, but not really this much. <laughs> so it was just disappointing in that way. It felt hard won the victory, but at the same time, it felt like there was not much point to the story. Like it felt very short despite it being 23 volumes long. And the majority of it felt like fight scenes, which will be great in the anime. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Ufa Table do it or however, again, however you say that. I really can't wait to see how they do it because it will be stunning. But as a story, it did nothing for me. I didn't care about anyone. There was no arc to be observed. There was no development of relationships. They all just kind of came together to fight this one fight against Muzan and that was it that that was kind of it it was that kind of story where it's like oh new villain let's defeat him new villain let's defeat him and then just you kind of go that way until volume 23 I I just felt nothing about it like they won and then there was that cheesy epilogue <laughs> I was like this this what was the, what was the point of this genuinely what what was the point of this there was no story here no character arc because there was no time for what all of it was fight scenes and them going beyond the bodily limits of themselves 30 times over i feel a little sorry for saying that because everyone and their mother in the anime manga community is obsessed with demon slayer since it came out but that's none of my business. I, that's none of my business. I don't know what to tell you. That's how I felt about it. Now, finally, at last, I think we can move on <laughs> and talk about the best stuff that I read this year. I realize that I am still kind of formatting this <laughs> as my worst and best, but I'm not constricting it to a certain number. I'm just making it so that there are books that I actually want to talk about, not, not having to have a list. So... Let's move on to the best stuff that I read this year. I read Winter Night this year, and I was going to read the third book also this year. But because it's for vlogs, I've realized that the books that I have to read for vlogs are just so much more effort. I didn't read it now. I will try and read it as soon as January starts because it like Winter Night was my first book in 2022. It would be cool if it was my first book in 2023. But since it's a vlog, again, it's kind of a lot of work. So I unfortunately didn't finish that, but that's always a favorite. Let me first find like if there was a new favorite, then I will talk about what I actually wanted to talk about. So obviously I finished Earthsea this year, which was a big deal because the first trilogy was my favorite, like just so we're clear, but I loved it the finale like the finale saved the entire collection for me if it wasn't this good I don't think I would want to keep the rest of the books for me because the ending matters that much so I finished Ursula this year and it's kind of jumped out of my head because things that are very impactful when they're good they just shoot out of my head because I can't be thinking about them constantly. <laughs> like I think the bad things linger more because of a sour taste in my mouth, but the good things that like I hyper fixated on for that amount of time just go out of my head entirely so I don't constantly think about it. But this was big for me. Like I loved this on a level I didn't think I could love a book this year. I 
don't think a lot of things came close. Like I have one book a year usually that infects me in that way. Last year it was Jane Eyre. I think now it was The Other Wind. I just immensely agreed with what she was saying. It was in line with my belief and with my liking, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So Ursula, a big one of this year, one of my favorite fantasy series now, like this cemented it, just the writing, the message, the characters, everything, the cat, <laughs> the cat. So if, if you drop the ball at Tehanu and never want to pick her up again, please do. That's all I will say because I'm with you. I'm with you on Tehanu and some of the stories in the tales, but just finish it. <laughs> finish it. Then obviously I read this book, which I, Star Wars, which I also very much enjoyed, but it's not a favorite. The reason I'm mentioning it is, is because I think it was the only Star Wars that I read this year. This year I went to a quiz, so I watched a lot of the movies and the Clone Wars show at once which greatly impacted me back in May because I think the quiz was on May the 4th. So this was like big back then. So I only read one Star Wars book this year, but I bought a couple more and I will probably read them next year. Another big surprise, big surprise. This was the year that I finally relocated my old favorites back from when I was a child. The Spaces, Traces, Spaces, Traces series of young adult mystery, I adored. Like, I absolutely loved it. I just read the first two books. I want to keep going. I think there's seven. I have all of them downloaded. I adored because it's just enough mystery and not gore and just enough not gore that actual, like, adult thrillers and mysteries have. I vastly enjoyed it. It brought back a memory I didn't know I wanted brought back of me sitting in the library and reading these five books over and over. I absolutely loved this. It's like younger young adult leaning on middle grade but it's definitely not because like <laughs> it is still a bit gruesome but I loved it. If you're looking for like a young adult mystery that's not focused on the forensics and on the gory reality, just on the fun mystery, pick this up. There have been a lot of rereads this year, which not that surprising because it's me, but I'm trying not to highlight all of them. <laughs> then but on a similar vein, we have Stoneheart. I only read the first book because the second and third, I cannot find them physically. And I really liked reading this physically. I have the ebooks, but I'm hesitant. I don't love reading ebooks. I will only do it when I have to, and that's mostly when I'm commuting, which we will get to. But I read Stoneheart, the first book. Absolutely adored it. Like, it was phenomenal. So engaging to read about London and all the landmarks in this context. I'm not even sure what genre this would be. Paranormal mystery. I'm not sure what genre this would be. <laughs> Definitely middle grade. I think they're supposed to be like 12, although they're written to be look to look like they're older than 12. But this was great fun. I absolutely adored it. Both of the books that I pulled out from my childhood were a hit this year. And then I think the last two things I will highlight before I get to before I get to the rereads will be a manga and two books that gave me a surprise. The manga, Flying Witch. Not really the manga so much as the show, but they go kind of hand in hand. So cozy and com comforting and just a good time. I'm keeping up with it as it's coming out monthly. I'm collecting the volumes. It's purely a feel-good story. There's nothing else to it. It's like a witch came to apprentice with her cousins. She has a cat. Her sister is a very powerful witch. Like it's just gardening and magic and flying whales and 
whimsical adventures. It's it's hilariously comforting. <laughs> so I would recommend the show if you are more into the mangas. I would recommend the mangas. But the kind of similar to this, I read Ava Evergreen. I finished the first book and I'm almost done with the second. I say almost, but I have like a hundred pages left of the second book. It's also a great series. This is Kiki's Livery Service. It is very influenced by Japan, like all the places are Japanese, but it does something different with it. It's like, what if Kiki had almost no magic? What would happen then? <laughs> but it's great fun. Middle grade, sort of like the last couple of books. It's very good. As you can see, me and everyone on booktube this year we've just been leaning into comfort and coziness i think those two books would those two words would be like trending in the booktube community this year and i agree i couldn't agree more this was basically comfort ultimate and then the last one which was not so, not so comforting but that i want to highlight is sherlock holmes i started reading sherlock holmes this year because I rewatched Sherlock back in June. I read Hound of the Baskervilles and I just finished actually like what this week, The Sign of Four. I enjoyed Hound of the Baskervilles, didn't love that much The Sign of Four. Like it was just still a low four star, but I preferred the vibes of The Hound of Baskerville. But I really, really love his writing style because it's not that important what the mystery is. Like it's, the mystery is juvenile for everyone in the 21st century. Like it was mysterious back when mystery wasn't really that big of a thing. But the writing and the vibes and just the whole old timey English and it's very accessible, which I didn't expect. I thought his English would be a bit more jarring. But uh, the way I'm reading this is I play Stephen Fry who reads the audiobook. I have like the Sherlock Holmes collection and then I read along and it's a wonderful experience. I would recommend it highly to anyone looking to read Sherlock Holmes because Stephen Fry is Stephen Fry. But this is a classic that's also very, very, very accessible. Sort of the last things I want to talk about are rereads. First one being the Bungo universe. I, as I said already, I think in a wrap up, I reread all of this for my birthday. And since season four is now coming out, I read one and a half books again. And I read the entirety of the manga that I hadn't read thus far, which is, I think, volumes one through 13. And the thing that I can now confidently say about this is that Kafka's best work is the books undoubtedly is the books like the manga is enjoyable but it's hilariously short like <laughs> the, in the show I don't think the show would have really worked as well as it did without them adapting the books at the beginning of every season the show just would have been so flat and very very short because this manga works in arcs and that's why I think he is stuck and doesn't know where to keep the plot going so the books are absolutely his strength. And if you've never picked up the books in this series, I more than highly recommend it. I don't think my love for this series or the character would be this strong if I had never discovered the books. This one remains my favorite. Like it just remains my favorite because this duo is my favorite pair of characters in the series and my favorite duo to read about in general in this series. That's all I will say for this. Next up, I'd like to brag a little bit because I finally finished my collection of Tokyo Ghoul this year. I collected the rest of the manga and I got all of the books. This was the last, the last book. Quest. I translated this myself. It has a lot of pages. It's in French, which I do not speak a word of. I translated this using a combination of my dad for help, a dictionary, and a scanning software, and a translator, and my own common sense to correct some sentences. I did a very good job, if I do say so myself. Like, this is the only thing in the Tokyo Ghoul universe that was never translated into English. 
the only ones that I could find were Japanese, French, and Italian. I speak none of those languages, but I was like, the French is the cheapest. My dad knows French. Let's just go with French. <laughs> and I have a whole like Google document with this entire translation. I put the pictures exactly where the pictures have to go in the text. It was several days of effort. Like I worked all day long for like three or four days, maybe five. It was worth it. It just proves that the translations are no trouble when you want to do them. Like that was, it was so much fun getting to determine what the character meant based on context because I know and love these people and then correcting the sentences. And when there was a particularly important sentence I didn't want to mistranslate, I went to my dad and I was like, does this mean what I think it means? It was a project. It was a project, all right. But I'm very proud of it because I was irritated that there was a whole book in the Tokyo Ghoul universe with some of my favorite characters in it that I never read and I wouldn't be able to read unless I put in the effort and I did. I did and it was great. It's actually my favorite book. If you don't know the Tokyo Ghoul books are kind of non-essential but a lot of fun. They're just like vignettes from the daily lives of all the character pairings and what whatnot but they're so good. They add so much to their characterizations that I highly recommend you picking them up if you enjoy if you enjoy the characters. Look into what book is about, what each book is about, and then maybe pick and choose from there. This was my favorite because it had my favorite characters. It had Heisei with the cues. A lot of the stories were about them and it had Ayato and Hinami who are my favorite pairing in the show, in the series, in the manga, whatever. And it had a whole story about them. So I, I knew I had to get this. I was very careful when I was translating their story to make sure that every dialogue was correct. <laughs> so this was a project but one that I'm very proud of. And if you ever want to read this book and can't find the translation, I don't know, maybe hit me up and I'll send you the Google Doc with limited editing responsibility because I'm very proud of this. The last thing that I want to talk about is my Wheel of Time reread. This year I read three books. I read Dragon Reborn and, <laughs> and these. Two. I won't be able to hold them up for this long. I just wanted to show you. I am extremely proud of that <laughs> because these are bricks. Like these are absolute bricks. Look at this <laughs> next to my head and everything. Also, I'm not sure if you can see that. I abused them with the tabs infinitely. So Shadow, Re Shadow Rising, I was reading for like half the year. And that is because with Jordan, and it's a funny quirk that I've had ever since I read him for the first time, whenever I hit something that is very boring to me, I stop reading and I just cannot get into it. But as soon as I pick it back up, the boring thing ends and something fascinating happens. Like I was struggling with this book since, I don't know, May. And then when I picked it back up, I read it in like three days. I don't know why that happens to me, but it's, it's a common trend with this. These type of bricky fantasies are just, for me at least, not something I can binge upon reread because it's, because I know what's going to happen. And I don't have that drive to just finish it immediately, but I loved this immensely compared to the first time that I read it. This was my least favorite book the first time that I read it, but now I was more than fond of it. I loved it. <laughs> Specifically the part with Rand, like Rand's perspective, everything that happens in the waste, which I hated last time because I don't really love the Aiel <laughs> as a race or as characters in general. I vastly enjoyed this this time. It was a massive, massive improvement upon my memory and I flew through it. I was very happy with the conclusion of this reread and immediately after this because one of my favorite characters got introduced in this book and continues on to the next book so I had to. I kind of had to and I think this one is even worse in terms of the tabs if you can see it all but yeah. <laughs> Fires of Heaven 
with this one, I had a bit of a problem. Now, as of filming this, I'm not done with it yet. I, I have a couple chapters left of the women and then I have to read the finale. But I'm practically done and I will be done by the end of the year, which is why I'm talking about it. And I know everything that happens near the end, so it's not like I need to wait to find out. I read this instantly because Rayanne's storyline continues and there's a lot of that character that I adore, but they're gone in this book. Like they pass on in this book. So <laughs> several characters that I love pass on in this book. So a bit unfortunate and why I think I'm not as quick with it as I thought I would be. But this will be probably the last thing that I read in 2021 now that I fin 2022. Now that I finish it, I just wanted to say that these two books really surprised me. They were not my favorites. They were far from my favorites the first time that I read them. They surprised me this year. Like these two are brick books. Like when you just put them together, it's mean to expect of someone <laughs> to read this. <laughs> but I loved them. I absolutely loved them. I'm very happy the reread is going so well. It's a casual reread. Like, I don't care about reading these quickly. Like, I'm gonna read a book a month. I read three this year, and I'm very happy with that because they are rereads. <laughs> Maybe if you're going quicker than I am, good for you. But I'm just taking my time. I'm enjoying the descriptions so much more now that I'm taking them in. There's so many hints that I'm uncovering for the first time. So many things I noticed and I highlighted. So many lines that I think speak on what is going to happen next. Like this was just an incredible year for the Wheel of Time. And I'm very happy my reread is going so well, albeit a bit slowly. So if you want to discuss anything that happens in books one through five, we can discuss it because I'm not sure when I'm going to pick up book six. I have a couple more things <laughs> I need to read until I get to book six. And there's just one more thing I wanted to highlight before I let you go. <laughs> and that is this this. I just wanted to highlight how pretty this is for the price. It's a random thing to mention, I know. But like, look at the foiling. And when you take it off, like this is just cruel to everything else. Look at it. This cost me, I'm trying to convert it in my head, 120 of my local currency, which is like what? I don't know. I think it was less than 20 euros, actually. But look at it. For the price, this was insane. It's like full color inside. This is just so worth the money. And if you were debating getting it, please do, because it's hilariously good. And it's the main reason on why the Darkling is my favorite character. That's the last thing I wanted to highlight in this book chat to scratch that. Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch. This goddamn book. The first time I read like 50 pages, now I got to page 160. I tried to consume this while I was commuting. I couldn't. I could not. I hate, I hate how slumpy this is making me. I just hate it. It's not anything in particular. It's just not the vibes that I want to be reading. Like I was disappointed with this after the first book. How do you think I'm going to feel so long after the first book? It's like it's casinos and it's <sighs> boats and just gangs. I know the first book was also like gangs <laughs> and trickery and stuff, but this just has a note that I do not enjoy in it. I think the main difference is that in book one there's that whole like retrospective with chains and I enjoyed that so much more than the actual main plot that this is just missing that aspect of it. I'm not sure if I will ever finish this trilogy to be very honest. This was a struggle. Every time I pick it up I get a hundred pages deeper into it but barely like just barely. I was reading this on my commute that is like over an hour long and I kept just looking out the window 
which is not a compliment to the book. But this is it for the video. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything else before the new year. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see. Maybe I'll do like my favorite movies of the year or something. I don't know. Maybe a vlog, although the vlogs are very exhausting. Maybe I'll do something about movies and TV shows, like to highlight them in this year. But I just wanted this to be a casual chat. It's probably very long, but again, you can jump around based on what you're interested in. I hope it was somewhat enjoyable. I like just sitting down and openly talking rather than really sticking to a format. So I'm going to try and do maybe like these book chats every now and then. In the new year, I hope to do more videos now that I've <laughs> figured out I hate the format. But university, university is kind of just keeping me not in the mood to do anything. We'll see. We will see. That is it. I gave you a wrap up for the months and for the years at once. <laughs> I hope it was somewhat enjoyable. I wasn't as negative as I thought I would be, honestly. I try to focus more on the positive side of things. So I hope once more that this was somewhat enjoyable. It was for me. That kind of matters the most. But still, did you find it fun? Did you prefer this format to the like three videos that I would have had to publish otherwise? But yeah, that is it. I will see you in the next video, whether that is this year or next year. Happy holidays.